Happy holidays and welcome to the Baba Palooza Extravaganza. That might be too much, but I am your host, Rachel, from the Dotting Center. And as a recap, I would like to show you last year's bobble that we made. That's this one. And then last week's bobble was this one. Oh, that was a fun one. I like that one. And then this week's bobble design is this one. Fancy, huh? So go ahead and grab two multi-surface paint colors, some sparkly rhinestones, and a plain glass or plastic bobble, and let's get going. We're gonna make our collection, one ornament at a time. So the first thing you will need is something that you can put your bobble into so that it won't move around on you as you paint. I found that little plumbing part at Home Depot and then I put two little pieces of tack on either side and it just sticks right in there. You're gonna need some rhinestones. Aren't these beautiful? So pretty. I like to get the ones for uh, nail manicurists. They've got all different sizes on Amazon and yeah, sparkly. You're gonna need some uh, paint applicator bottles. These are available at the Dotting Center. And then right here, now this is the paint that I used for the first set of dots, but I don't recommend it for this project. It's a beautiful paint. But for some reason, on glass, it doesn't work. It works beautiful on canvas, but not so much with the glass. So, uh, something to note. And you'll be able to see what it does when it dries. It gets all wrinkly and weird. So the first thing you want to do is divide your bobble. Now all you need is a strip of paper. That's right. We're not going to use math and we're not going to use a ruler. We're going to use a piece of paper. Now what you want to do is just eyeball where the center of your bobble is and make a mark. You'll line up the top of your paper with the, uh, the hanger and then just do this all the way around your ball just visually where the center is. It doesn't have to be exact. So now you have a mark all the way around your ball. Now we're going to find the circumference of the ball. We're going to stick the piece of paper onto the ball and then align one side of the paper with your marks and then fold the paper back right where it meets with the um, with the cut mark and then you just cut it so that it's the exact circumference of your bobble and then take it off and we're going to divide it now into eight sections so to do that, you take your piece of paper and you fold it in half. Then you fold it again and this gives you quarters. And then you fold it in half again and then that gives you eighths. So it will divide your bobble into eight sections. Then what you can do is grab your scissors and just make a notch at each of the corners. And this will give you a cool little divider that you can use over and over and over again. If you're gonna do multiples, you might as well make it and keep it. And then you just stick it onto your bobble and then out of frame, er, there we go. Then you line it up with the center line of your bobble so that it kind of goes exactly around the center and then you stick it back on with your tape or your rose sticker. It's very important that you use a rose sticker, otherwise it won't work. Just kidding. So then you get your pencil and you want to go and divide it. So everywhere where there's a little notch, you just do a line vertically going up from that notch. And really you don't even need to use a really long line. You could just use a, a dot, something that just gives you a marker um, the littlest amount of marks that you can make is the, <laughs> is the bestest. Oh, struggling. Because then you have, um, you don't have to erase it so much at the end. So now we're going to get the super glue. 
I'm using a different one. You can use all different kinds of glues to add your rhinestones, but I'm gonna try this and we'll see how it works. So the basic thing is you want your largest rhinestones to go in the center. So whatever shape you use, just get the biggest size and put it on these uh, vertical divider lines all the way around your bobble. And you just need a little bit of glue. I've found that the more glue that you use, the more squishes out the sides and it can look kind of yucky. See? So really with super glue, you just need a tiny, teeny, tiny bit and it should be fine. So then you will do this all the way around your bobble and this is just so satisfying. I love it. You can also find those wax pencils at the dotting center. You only need one. These things last forever. The one that I have right here has lasted me for about three years and uh, yeah, it's got a lot of life left in it. Now that all of the largest rhinestones are glued on, let's grab our smaller sizes. So now for the second round of rhinestones, we're just going to add one on top and one below. So you want to grab the largest size of your rhinestones in that round shape and you just stick it one right on top and one right below. And then you do that for each section all the way around your bobble. Okay, so now that you have all of the largest sizes done, we're gonna come in with one on top and one on bottom, but this time a size smaller than what you just used. So one goes right above that one and one goes right below it. And now you'll just complete each one of these lines of beautiful rhinestones all the way around your bobble. Just making sure that you size down that rhinestone to the size smaller with each step. And once you get that done all the way around, you're just gonna add the smaller size on top of those two. And usually you can find these sets on Amazon as like, um, like a nail tech kit. They come in like five different sizes for um, you know, when people get their nails bedazzled. It's a lot cheaper than if you were to buy Swarovski, you know, cause that would be probably 10 times the cost. Uh, and really, if you're using these for Christmas ornaments, I think it's gonna be just fine. So you don't need to spend a ton of money. Although if you've got it, hey, girl, go for it. So now we're gonna make four little dots of glue. These are the tiniest, little dots of glue for these small sizes. And then you just place them one right on top of the other, trying to uh, be careful to be as vertical as you possibly can. I know it's tough to keep it lined up, but yeah. And then for these, we're just gonna do every other line. We're gonna extend it all the way to the top by going four stones up, just on every other section. So this is how it looks after, it's, uh, after you've done all the bedazzling. And now we're gonna come in with our first paint color and you can pick whatever paint color you'd like and put two dots on either side of your largest stone right in the center and just surround them with uh, dots all the way around in kind of a border. 
Now let's place a dot in between each of the rhinestones at the top extending up. So place your largest dots in between the two largest stones and then gradually make your dots smaller as you place them going up this, uh, this line of stones up to the top. And now we'll move to the bottom and we'll do the same thing. Just place a dot in between on either side of the two stones. And now we'll make two little dots to fill in this space and then three dots extending down from that bottom stone. And that will finish off this section. So here's what that looks like up close. And now we're gonna do that same color. We're gonna skip that smaller section and we're gonna go on to this longer line of rhinestones and use the same color. We're using alternating colors. So for every other line of crystals, you'll switch the paint color. It just adds a little bit of variation. I like to use colors that are reflected in the rhinestones. And apparently, I like to use cameras that don't focus properly. What's going on? Okay, I think we're good now. I apologize for that. All right, so now we're gonna just add the dots going up. There's my son in the background. He makes an appearance in every one of my videos. Can you hear that? It sounds like karate is going on in the other room. Okay, so now we'll just finish this section and you'll do that on every other line of rhinestones all the way around. So you'll do this color four times and then we'll switch to our other color. But before we do that, let's extend this section all the way so that it hits the hanger on your bobble. So just make dots that are relatively the same size as the smallest rhinestones that you have at the tip of each of these pink sections and then just connect it up to the top of the, where the hanger is on your bobble. And now here is a paint that works all the time. Folk art multi-surface in any color. I've used them all and they work beautifully straight out of the bottle for use with bottles. Oh. Yep. So uh, we're going to use the number 16 tip for this one. And you just want to shake all the paint so that it's down in the front of your bottle. Make sure all the bubbles are out. And then you just want to extend each one of your alternate spokes all the way to where the hanger is on your bobble. So now that you're familiar with that dot pattern, we're gonna use this different paint, that Folk Art Multi-Surface Wisteria paint, and just do the same dot pattern on each one of these alternating spokes of crystals all the way around. So you'll do this pattern again four different times and complete your bobble. And you can see here, this paint acts completely differently. It has different qualities. It stands up a little bit more. It's got uh, more body and it tends to dry more rounded than the Martha Stewart paint. It's just a really good quality paint and it works straight out of the bottle. You don't have to mix anything with it to get nice bubbly dots. All right, so now everything is dry, and so we're gonna finish off the bottom. This is an optional step, but I think it looks kinda cool if you just connect each one of these lines so that they cross on the bottom. My mom once did a sugar plum fairy themed Christmas tree. Oh, she did that one year, it was gorgeous, and it was in these colors. I think it would, this would look good on that tree. Do you all do that? Do you have like themed Christmas trees or do you do this by color? Is it the same one every year? Let me know in the comments. What do you guys do for Christmas? Okay, so now what you're doing is going through and just erasing all the pencil marks 
making sure that none of those show up. And this is what it looks like on black. Same colors, except for the Martha Stewart paint. I sw swapped it out with Folk Art multi-surface pearl white which is one of my favorite paints to use in bottles and you can see it's the same design just different color now let me show you up close what that Martha Stewart paint looked like it just kind of wrinkled down when it dried and it, it deflated a little bit where you can see the multi-surface folk art just looks nice and round and smooth Sometimes metallic paints can do that, so you just want to watch for it. Weirdly enough, it works beautifully on canvas. I don't know what happened with the glass, but... Now here is the folk art up close. You can see that's kind of what you want the dots to look like. Nice and smooth. I hope you're all enjoying making your own dotted bobble collection. Now keep your bottles out, people, because I'm not done. I've got some exciting new designs on the way and a fresh new technique to show you. I can hardly wait. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, well, if you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials like this. And as always, you can visit me over at thedottingcenter.com for any dot art supplies that you might need. Thanks again for watching. Uh, have a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye.